and welcome to Flamecast. I am Todd Pletz. And this is Travis Buckmeyer. And we almost had some other guests, but didn't Todd turn out that way. Todd scared them all away, didn't you, Todd? <laughs> no, that would be Tina. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Chris Marler was going to join us, and uh, I called him, what, about an hour ago? And said, are you going to join us? And he's like, well, I better... Um, help out putting up this fence and you know get stuff done with Tina first and I'm like okay. <laughs> well, you know, that just goes show you that he's a responsible, scared husband, and that's good. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Go uh, Tina, use the power. <laughs> yeah. Matt was going to join us, but something came up. So yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, just the two of us. So that means you're down to pretty much I'm your only friend that's left, Todd. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, I do have a list that I could go through, but I yeah, mean you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Travis, man. When we get you, usually our ratings go up, so Yay. Yeah. <laughs> or our, more like our download counts. I don't know if we we don't really have ratings. <laughs> uh we can use that as a rating. <laughs> oh, okay. That sounds good. All right. Well, let's just jump right into it, I guess. All um, right. Let's go into TV news. So, yeah, there's been all this talk about this new Star Trek series. Um, I mean, it's been a long time since we talked about any of this stuff, so some of this stuff might be a little old, but could be. hey. Yeah, we just got to deal with it. Um, yeah, supposedly Nick Meyer, who directed Star Trek II, and he had his hand in Star Trek VI as well, arguably the two best Star Trek movies out there. Um, yeah, he's involved in the, the new series, as well as Rod Roddenberry, son of Gene Roddenberry. So it's got some potential there. Yeah. But it's still scary that they're not really telling us exactly what the series is going to be. Up until about a week ago, and it's rumored that this will be an anthology series with the uh, first season actually post-Undiscovered Country. So I'm thinking, get George Takei, man. Bring in Captain Sulu. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if they could pull him in. Oh, he would do it in a heartbeat, man. He would be there. Yeah, so. I did see the note that they specifically mentioned that in this scenario that we would not see Captain Kirk because, you know, he's in the Nexus, so too bad, so sad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put it in it. There you go. Yeah. But, um, of course, uh, what we've been told is the the pilot will be on CBS, and if you want to watch it after that, too bad, so sad. you got to get CBS All Access. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Which Correct. I'm actually thinking of doing now. At first, I'm like, I'm not going to pay for another you know, channel out there. That, you know, <laughs> you've, I've got Netflix, and I'm yep. paying for that. So, and I'm trying not to pay for all these services because then I'll just... <laughs> I mean, I'm already connected with DirecTV right now. Right. But uh, well, this, my plan this is... is their, well, this is their plan on how to regain their revenue and um, with everybody streaming off, uh, you know, either Netflix, Hulu, or whatever, um, you know, they're they're losing advertising dollars because people aren't watching, you know, the shows like they normally used to. Yeah. So now this is the play. Well, hey, I'm gonna make you pay whatever this fee is, and you can come to my specific, you know, all access thing, and you gotta watch it there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I threw this by Rachel as an idea. I'm like, let's get rid of Directv. <gasps> we'll sign up with Hulu. Actually, Hulu right now has. I'm not being paid for <laughs> telling you about this, but um, Hulu right now has a free one-month trial. I'm not sure exactly how long that goes, but it, they seem to have those periodically. So, yeah. um, so we're trying out 
Hulu right now, and then I'm like, okay, all the shows that she wants to watch can either be found on Netflix, on Hulu, and CBS All Access. So we get those three. We're paying, you know, roughly around $30, mm-hmm. maybe. Maybe a little less. Who knows? Um, but that's a heck of a lot less than paying for DirecTV. <laughs> and, I mean, we're we just have the basic service right now. And... Right. I mean, it's over a hundred dollars, more like you know, around a hundred and what twenty somewhere around there. So it's like, yeah, I would gladly ditch Directv and save all that money, <laughs> and <laughs> and then watch the shows when I want to watch them, because I, I basically do that anyways. You know, I the shows come on TV and I have them recorded and. I go and watch them at my leisure. So right. why not just do it with all streaming? So, Yep. Well, like so, I said, that it's going to be a point of as long as you can limit to what you're going to stream um, and you're fine with that, you know, it's the more economical way to go. But as everybody transitions over this, the networks are going to try and find different creative ways to suck more money out of us. Yeah. And the true test will be to see once how they do it. Well, with the, the streaming method... I'm guessing they might be making as much, if not more, than they would if, uh, you know, just going through the regular old-style channels, you know? Right. And there's no middleman. You're paying CBS directly. So you're not paying a cable company. They're taking their cut and all that, so... Right. I think it might be better for them, and it might be better for us, so... I've come, like, 180 on this... <laughs> Well, so. we've always known known that you were very decisive on these things, so um, this this changes nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can be, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, hopefully it'll be worth it. You know, I mean, we'll still be watching other things on the CBS All Access, but if Star Trek is really good, then I'll be happy. <laughs> well, let's, let's hope it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and speaking of Star Trek, uh, Axanar is deep into legal proceedings now, and we get, you know, tidbits here and there, but they're still fighting it, so. Yeah, that Go was going to turn pretty quick. Yeah. Go Axanar, come on! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as we were talking about uh, streaming services, and Netflix in particular... Have you caught Daredevil Season 2 yet? Nope, I have not started that one yet. It's on have my you list. Seen, have you seen Season 1? Yes, I did see Season 1. Okay. Well, Season 2 is just as good as Season 1. Um, of course, you know that uh, The Punisher shows up and Elektra shows up. Those are yes. not spoilers at all. Because... No, they're not. Oh, wait, they are. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Oh my gosh, you've spoiled the entire thing. But if I told you that was also involved, then yeah, that would be a spoiler. But <laughs> but yeah, See, uh, you think you're being funny, but yet you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just got to say, John Berenthal plays an excellent Punisher. Um, yeah, he's kind of you know my my thought on him is from his time on Walking Dead that yeah he would make that kind of you know mental. How should we say um, comparison? Yeah, on on that acting. So, yeah, I was good with that choice when he initially announced it. Yeah, me too. I don't know, like going from his Walking Dead character, where it's like you can't protect him, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like you can't protect him, Red. <laughs> <laughs> you just change one word in there, and it's, it's like the same guy. <laughs> That's what we like. Yeah, that, I just finished it up maybe about a week ago. I, yeah, that was an excellent season. So if you haven't done so, you got to queue that up and start going on that. Um, how about Jessica Jones? Have you caught any of that? I got about halfway through it, and it didn't quite hold on to me as much as 
uh, Daredevil did, so I'm thinking I'll need to go back and finish it, but I'm, I'm about halfway through. Yeah. It's... I, I would say it's still good. However, it's so... <sighs> I think it's, uh, well, a little slow, but it's a lot more depressing, (laughs) I think, than Daredevil, where it was like, it's just a downer almost every time when you watch it, and it it kind of, you know, gets to you a little bit. Yeah, I I can see that from what I've gone through so far. And David Tennant plays an excellent uh, villain in that. Serious, yes. yeah. <laughs> kind of creepy. I too. mean, you, yeah, you couldn't think you would hate him, you know. With, I mean, everyone knows him from Doctor Who, and yeah, oh my gosh, you just want to kill him in this series <laughs> over and over. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, within Jessica Jones, of course, you got to see Luke Cage. Yep, and. Uh, as we've heard now, Luke Cage is getting his own series. Yay! Coming this fall. Hopefully less depressing. <laughs> yeah, they, they do have a trailer out there on Netflix for it. Oh, okay. A little little teaser. And, <laughs> I, yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so you'll, you'll have to check that out. But uh, yes. I think when I got done with uh, Daredevil Season 2, you know how usually... It, it does a countdown to the next show coming up in the series. Well, right. since it was the last episode of Daredevil, instead it wanted to uh, play me the the teaser for Luke Cage. So I'm like, ah, okay. Cool. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it looks like it'll be good. And then they're also going to bring in Iron Fist and get uh, a series out of that character. I, I'm going to go with yay, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really don't know too much about Iron Fist. I'm guessing one of two things, though. Yeah. He hits a lot of things, and it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, I guess he's more like martial arts type guy. That's what I'm so, going with. Yeah. And eventually... After they get through, I suspect after Iron Fist, they are going to do a show on the Defenders. However, this is not your your father's Defenders. <laughs> oh, no. With Doctor Strange, kind of the head of it, and uh, the Hulk, and so on. This is the Defenders with basically everyone that's had a Netflix series. So you're going to have Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist... Um, so kind of like the the Econo Defenders, right? <laughs> yeah. I can do that. Or maybe the Econo Avengers type deal. Yeah, you uh, know. Either way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll get into more about Doctor Strange a little later because that would be in movie news, but we're not quite there yet. Um. And uh, yeah, they threw a threw us for a loop on Arrow. What was that about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago? Why yes, sun dramatic. Yeah, they killed off Black Canary. <gasps> oh my God, she died. The horror and of the humanity. I'm thinking, not really dead. <laughs> what? Are you saying that? That they would pull a plot twist where <laughs> this character isn't really dead? That perhaps the death was staged? What? Yeah, it, it was Yeah, it was just too suspicious that uh, they kind of left out some of the in-between part there. Because yeah. she had fully recovered from... Well, I wouldn't say fully recovered. She was uh, going to fully recover. I should say, is what the doctors had said. And, yeah, we've got uh, uh, Oliver going in to see her, and they have their little chat, and... And suddenly, poof. Yep, poof, she's having a a rest, and boom, she's gone. And the, the interesting part is, if you actually paid attention to where she was stuck with the weapon, um... 
it was left side, well, be her right side. So it wasn't like it went too along an artery or anything like that either. So I didn't. Mm. Iffy. Yeah, I'm suspecting we'll see her back. <sighs> Probably. And I, I'm just guessing that they went and staged it so she would be out of harm's way because that was um that was the threat you know mm -hmm. killing off her in order to get back at uh her father so yeah so let's see how that plays out in the final few episodes yep um also in DC universe I don't know if you saw the Flash Supergirl crossover. Flash. That was an enjoyable episode. I think it was too. Um Yeah, a little I would say uh you know, reach back to uh some of the comic crossovers, especially the one between Flash and Superman where they had their race um, in the comics, and they tried to do somewhat of a race in the TV show. Right. Although it was kind of like, it had a point to it. <laughs> <laughs> Not just, let's see who's faster. They they had a, a means to the end there. Yep. So. And they had an interesting explanation why we don't see them together more often, so that was that was interesting. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they were all from the same uh, universe. <laughs> <laughs> In case anybody hadn't noticed it yet, he just spoiled it for you. So there you go. Now, <laughs> well, <laughs> but yeah, you are correct. It was it was interesting to see once that's that's how they're going to play it. That it's a you know they're doing a multiverse and um, you know Supergirl's not on the same one with the the Flash and the the other meta meta humans. So yeah, well, I think it. Is it Flash is on Earth One and Supergirl's like Earth Two or something like that? No, no, that's uh, the other dude's on Earth Two, so she's probably on like an Earth Seventeen or something. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, how you can determine how many there actually are, or how he's going to get back to the one in question? <laughs> just saying. <laughs> okay, could be Earth Thirty Seven. Thirty-seven, three hundred ninety-five. <laughs> now on Earth thirty-seven, we have like uh, Jay and Silent Bob's um, alter egos, and <laughs> Cockknocker is the villain. And <laughs> oh god, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Kevin Smith, he's going to be directing. Well, he actually did direct a Flash episode, which is coming up pretty soon. Should be what in just a couple of weeks, I think. Hmm. But, uh, there's only, there can only be a few weeks left of episodes, I think. Yeah, there's not too many left. So, and uh, of course, I've been catching uh, Legends of Tomorrow as well. I, I'm still not too sure about that show yet. Yeah, I watched the first one, then kind of meh. So it, it'll be on my list to you know maybe catch in reruns or whatever. But I'm not dying to get there. Yeah, I, I'd say it's okay. But uh, yeah, it it's not up there with Flash and Arrow yet. Their uh, their stories are a little bit predictable, I would uh, say. Yep. And they they are kind of trying to branch out from the initial objective of why they're actually together. Right. Um. Because I was thinking myself, I'm like. You can only do this story so many times, and people are going to get sick of it. So, yeah, yeah, they they are branching out a little bit. So that that was good to see. So, any other uh, shows you've been uh, catching? Well, I see you don't have uh, Agents of Shield on there. Yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> well, a little, little miss on that one because I enjoyed the Agents of Shield. Looks pretty intriguing. So okay, this is is it their third season? Uh yeah, yep, this will be the third season. Okay, so it's uh winding down. It's winding down and we don't quite know what the crossover will be with the uh Captain America movie, so it's really interesting. Yeah, that'll be something. 
Yeah, you know, I've I've got it in my Netflix queue. I should really go and start watching this, but <laughs> what do I do instead? I podcast with Travis. <laughs> yep. Way to go, Tad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'll I'll get to it at some point. How about tomorrow? I don't know. Mondays Mondays we've got Supergirl, we've got Gotham. Uh <laughs> True. There's True. two hours right there. Uh, yeah, we'll see. All right. Let's head over to the movie news. Okay, so. The Force Awakens. Final count. I want to hear your final count, dude. Only nine. In the theater. Yeah, we tied. <laughs> Awesome. That's only because I stopped because I didn't want Todd to feel bad. Yeah, yeah. Even though right. he repeatedly went on a free pass. That's right, I did. So he did not support the movie, <laughs> and therefore hey, doesn't I, count. I paid, How many did you pay for, Todd? I paid for two How, of them. You paid for two. <laughs> yes. That's rather disappointing. Hey, well, what can you do? So how many times have you watched it on uh, DVD? I've only gotten around to watching it once on DVD. Well, right. actually, Blu-ray. On Blu-ray. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I beat you there. Uh, I'm back in first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the theater was the big thing in my mind, so. Why? You weren't paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> still, still. Did you even buy a soda or a popcorn? Um... Well, I never buy drinks, and you uh, snuck your stuff in, didn't you? No popcorn. Actually, you know what? Because <laughs> most of the time when I would go, it would be like right after work, so it's still afternoon, still matinee prices and such. I would go and bring my my refillable popcorn bucket, which you fill it up, it's two dollars. Initially, yeah, I was paying two dollars for having the bucket refilled. And then, yeah, something interesting was happening where I would go in the afternoon and I go and get use my free pass, go and fill up the bucket, and they don't charge me a thing. And I'm like, really? <laughs> hmm. So I, I'm thinking because it was the afternoon and it was during the week, they just had all this popcorn sitting there and not enough people to eat it. They're just like, here, here you go. <laughs> so I'm like, awesome. So I, yeah, for most of these movies, I haven't paid a thing. So, so uh, which one of your, every one of your theaters there by Todd is listening to this? Just keep an old Todd's a freeloader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> freeloader Todd. Yeah. Todd well. <laughs> Uh, I did get over to see 10 Cloverfield Lane about a week after it had been released. Um, I don't know if you had seen this one at all. Uh, nope. In fact, the uh, I just simply resorted to reading the Wikipedia page. I spent oh my, my uh, two and a half minutes and uh, got about as much out of the movie as uh, you did. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's all worth seeing for John Goodman, man. Uh, John Goodman is a crazy man. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was uh, enjoyable. And, uh, I mean, you knew that it had some ties to Cloverfield. Otherwise, I wouldn't call it Cloverfield Lane. <laughs> Why? You are correct. <laughs> yeah, so you do get to see some... Uh, uh, I would say alien uh interaction mm -hmm. so for about what 30 seconds yeah not too long there you go <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh but it's it's more about the people involved that uh well the best part is as i understood it this was taken from an independent film that didn't have anything to do with the cloverfield but to add the cloverfield that's why you get 30 seconds of alien <laughs> yeah well but, I mean, it ties together nicely. It makes sense. 
All right, so. well, in that case, when it comes out on Blu-ray at my old friend at the Red Box, I shall go over, spend my buck fifty, and watch it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, I would uh, suggest watching that one. All right, I'll add that to the queue. All right. And, yeah, the biggest movie this past month, Ooh. of course, was Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Don't see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have you seen it? Well, yes, I have seen it. I went opening night because I am a ver- very firm supporter of the opening night scenario. Okay. And you did not care for it. Well, it's, how do I put it? It's, I mean, it was okay. It wasn't spectacular. It wasn't, oh my gosh. There are, are parts of it where, uh, like I would ask, um, why exactly was Wonder Woman there? <laughs> it was never actually broached upon, explored, other than, boom, she's there. She's stealing your stuff. She's fighting the stuff. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of explained because Luther's got the, the photo of her. Been doing the digging up on... Uh... All these metahumans out there. Mm-hmm. So that's a scary thought right there. Lex Luthor knows who all these heroes are, you know, as far as their their real identities. Yes. <laughs> Which Which they I, didn't explain how he managed to accomplish this either. I mean it's Right, right. It, it's a little, little too much of a um I you know it's a correct term, is it, but you know, I mean it just, it was just too easy. There, there didn't seem to, me to work for a lot of these things to come into play. Yeah. Well, I agree with you that yeah, it was good. It was enjoyable. However, it had its flaws. Yeah. It, it was. It's one of the few that I, I didn't have the urge to go back and watch it again. Oh, I actually God. did watch it a second time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, free pass. Free pass, oh, yeah. dude. <laughs> there you go. Freeloader Todd. Yeah, All that's right. right. Well, Chad hadn't seen it yet, so... And I really didn't want to stay at work that afternoon, so... I'm like, Chad, let's go see that movie you wanted to see. All right, so we leave work early, went and had some Chinese, went to the movie, and there we go. All right, well, good for you. (laughs) Yeah, I had two main problems with the movie. Uh, One, I really didn't care for Lex Luthor. Yes, this is the son of Lex Luthor. Alexander Luthor is supposedly, you know. Are you sure? Yeah, that was actually stated in the movie. Yes, but then it was implied that maybe it's not actually his biological son. Well, I mean, Lex (laughs) Lex Luthor does have a son in the comics. Um. And I really didn't look that up too much to see, is he an actual son in the comics, or is he a clone there? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. It was one of the rumors floating about, so. Uh, yeah, but either he, way, it's, yeah, the, yeah, his yeah. character was, was annoying. good as well. <laughs> annoying, but they, they did the portrayal of that he's a little bit, you know, he's a little bit of a whack job. Yeah. Which doesn't quite correspond to how he's able to do all these great things and... You know, I mean, just he was too much of an extreme on, on how they were portraying him. Yeah, um, and the the speech he was giving while Bruce Wayne was going and stealing his information, mm-hmm. that speech was just so. It made me feel uncomfortable <laughs> listening uh, to it. I'm like, yep. <laughs> ah, just turn away. I don't want to listen anymore. <laughs> Let's follow Bruce. Did, did yeah. you imply that you didn't want to look at it because you didn't want to listen? I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was, yeah, I don't know. It, it was is, like it he was, was trying to play Lex Luthor as a cross between what he should be and Jim Carrey's Riddler. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Like too over the top, you know. Mm-hmm. So that that was one. Number two. Why did you say Martha? <laughs> <laughs> what? Martha's your mother's name too? Oh my god. 
Let's be friends. <laughs> Super friends. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was just a little too corny there for me, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you had to have it happen somehow, but that was a little, yeah, that wasn't the way to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, on the plus side, I did like uh, Ben Affleck as as Batman. I did think he did a great job. Oh he, uh, yeah, he was the bright side of the movie. <laughs> That's weird, being it was so dark. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. Batman's fight scene in that warehouse when he is trying to save Martha. Mm-hmm. Superman's Martha, not his own Martha. Yep. <laughs> Some of those, it was like, I can see that, totally picture this in a comic book frame. <laughs> you know, some of those uh-huh. shots, especially, you know, one where he takes the guy and, you know, slams face him into the, the ground <laughs> face first. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, uh, Affleck did a really good job. I, I, I was impressed. He he's <laughs> up there as he might be my favorite Batman that I've seen so far on screen. He he did a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean his predecessor did a good job too, but I think he might have uh, he might have topped him. Mhm. So totally possible. But we'll see what happens next because uh Batfleck is getting his own solo movie, so mm-hmm. And he's directing it. Yes, that is correct. Well, let's hope his cast can take, take direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're also getting another uh, Batman movie, which is an animated movie. And this one's been talked about for quite a while, but I think what happened was, being that studios finally realized that R-rated superhero movies work with... Like, you know, Deadpool. <laughs> yep. They finally said, okay, green light on the killing joke. So we will see an animated killing joke movie with Kevin Conroy as Batman and uh, Mark Hamill returns as the Joker. Uh-huh. And there is a, a little sneak peek of that uh, footage out there on the internet somewhere yeah, that that's gonna have some potential yeah i will definitely be getting that so i i believe it's you know as all their uh animated stuff goes i'm sure it's you know direct to blu-ray dvd and such but uh yeah i doubt they'll do a theatrical release for it but you never know with these things yeah they think they get I mean, money out of it yeah, if they, I, I guess it's possible they could do a theatrical, if there's enough interest in it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll see. We're also getting another Indiana Jones movie. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, both Ford and Spielberg are on board, and supposedly last week, was it last weekend, Spielberg was telling people at a I think it was at a convention. It will be a continuation of the Crystal Skull, which I'm not sure is a good idea to say. <laughs> I'm really hoping he would just mess with people. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, well, on the plus side, Shia LaBeouf may need a job, so I'm get you know they can get him back, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna say, you know, if they do a continuation, would he be involved? But I think. His approval rating has gone up since he's done the weird, wacky stuff that he's done in the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, who knows? Maybe uh, maybe he's worth having on the movie. So. Sure. I'll bet. I mean, it couldn't make it any worse, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, his stuff in the last one was so corny that... I you can only go up from there. <laughs> you are yeah. Uh, well, I never doubt the powers of Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, eh, any other movies that you can think of that uh, maybe you've seen recently that? Uh... Uh, nothing current that we haven't already covered. Alrighty. Well, of course, with movies come trailers first. 
Yay. So, yeah, they released a new one for Captain America Civil War. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Gosh, oh, that was over a month ago now. <laughs> a month and a week ago. But, of course, you know, we got to see Spider-Man. Yep. And that seems to be the talk of that trailer. People well, either yeah, love it or hate it. <laughs> well, I, I I like what was going on there, but I, I think the way they did his costume was lackluster, so I'm not sure if it wasn't completely finished or what. It just it didn't... It, he looked too claymation. Hmm. I thought he... I, well, the, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought he looked a little retro myself. Yeah, the, he did, but if you actually looked at the costume on there, I mean, it just it looked too CGI'd. Hmm. Which is part... I mean, I think my challenge is you go back to the other movies and those costumes looked like, you know, cloth... Like a cloth costume. They didn't look like it was a rubber animated person. But again, that's just me throwing out an opinion. I was going to say the ones that we've seen recently do look like a rubberized costume. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Well, we've only gotten one shot yep. of seeing him in the costume, so we'll see what happens. But there will be... Um, uh, Spider-Man solo movie. Was it Spider-Man Homecoming? Yeah. I believe. <clears throat> and I want to say, wasn't that next year? Yeah, it's yeah. Out? They, they bumped up the speed on that one a little bit. Yeah, so uh, we may see a trailer for that in the near future. Yeah. Being it's only a year away. Spider-Man reboot number three. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't too thrilled with them rebooting him the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I guess I'm open to, <laughs> to what this new kid can do. We'll see, I guess. We'll give him a shot. Yeah. Speaking of giving someone a shot, well, they released a trailer for Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> and... I got to admit, when I, I saw the first trailer they put out, and this is back on March 3rd, actually. Um, yeah, there was some funny parts in there, but there was some parts where it was just like, I, I hope the movie's better than this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they did release a second trailer, an uh, international trailer. And when I went to see... Was it Batman vs. Superman? It must have been. Um, they showed the international trailer for Ghostbusters before Batman vs. Superman. <clears throat> and uh, they had a lot more of... Uh, oh, shoot. What's his name that plays Thor? Um, Hemsworth? Yeah. Chris Hemsworth. They, they had a lot more scenes with him in it. So... I think they're trying to sell off him a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, the, the it, it didn't seem least, as bad, but yeah. At least all the ghosts look pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It looks like uh, you know special effects are up there. Yeah, I mean, I'll give it a shot, and you know, we'll see what happens with it. It's you know, it's one of those things where you know, obviously it's hard to redo a classic like that, but you know, well, I'll give him a shot. And it's interesting, too, in the trailer that, uh, you know, they do make reference to, you know, 30 years ago, and they talk about these heroes back then. But is that actually part of the movie? You know, I'm going to go with yes. Is this kind of a continuation of a story instead of a total reboot of the story? Yep. And I guess that's the way I would rather have it be, mm -hmm. you know. So they're they're not saying that, okay, the stuff that happened before didn't exist. So uh, I guess we'll see. But uh, as far as going to it to see it in the theater, why not? You got all these free movie passes. Going to go see it. Well, that's what I'm thinking. If I still have the free movie pass at that point, <laughs> I might how, just go see it. How long do you get the, the free movie pass for? 
Uh, it's good until like the end of uh, May. And yeah, I think you have to I think try this... and win again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or well, I shouldn't say anything. Never mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, just gonna keep a... going and keep trying it, aren't you? <sighs> And the next movie. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Freeloader. <laughs> so we had a a new trailer for X-Men Apocalypse as well. And that was actually a month to the day. Mm-hmm. Um, of course we're going to go see this movie. <laughs> we're going to go see it, and uh, I really don't know what to make of it at this point. Yeah, it's it's a little too vague, but I mean, it really should be. Well, I mean, yeah, it, but it, it's almost, I mean, so you, when you see some of the um, effects that they were doing, some of the scenes, again, it looks almost too fakey. Um, it, I don't know, it just there's something off about it so far. Hmm. I try yeah. to explain it other than, yeah. Like, you know, there's a part where you have Archangel, you know, turning around and shooting and shooting his stuff out of his wings, and it just, it didn't look... You know, it looked like it was almost like a dream sequence, not an actual battle sequence. Hmm. Interesting. Well, who knows? That was, that was, oh, shoot. I got to back up. Because there was one more problem I had with Batman versus Superman. Too that many was... dream sequences. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it was like, okay, is this real or another dream? Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've moved on, Todd. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, right off the bat, <laughs> off the bat, <laughs> <laughs> but when when Bruce is floating up from the the cave, the bat cave, with all the bats around him, I'm like, "You gotta be shitting me! Come on!" And then we find out it's just a dream. I'm like, "Okay, I'm okay with that." <laughs> as long as it was a dream, because if this was actual canon, I'm like, <sighs> "Gonna throw a tantrum." Yeah. So, Doctor Strange. <laughs> Out of nowhere comes a Doctor Strange uh, trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, that happened only this past week. Why, yes. And, uh, again, there's there's not too much to uh, it was you a know, teaser infer. Trailer. Yeah. Yeah. It's a teaser, so it's teasing. <laughs> But yeah, I'll end up going to this one too. It, it looks yeah. like it's going to be great, and Cumberbatch is pretty good in just about anything he's been in. So yeah, I like the uh, um, the one note though. I think it was uh, the George Takei point out today that in all of his like movie posters for Cumberbatch, he's always facing away from you in the poster. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't realized that before, but not now once he did, I'm like, wait, well, yeah, that's all he does. <laughs> yeah. Turn around, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have him facing the opposite way on the imitation game, the opposite way on Star Trek Into Darkness, and now Doctor Strange poster as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And yeah, I was reading somewhere online. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but it had a little dialogue. It's like, photographer. Okay, uh, Benedict, could you turn around, please? And what? It's like, no. no. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, for this one, can we turn? No. no. <laughs> he just keeps saying no. Well, as long as he sticks to his convictions on that. <laughs> yeah. And the biggest trailer in the last month, two months, maybe Gun. three months. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> we finally got a trailer for Rogue One. Why, well, yes, we did. Yeah. This movie is going to be awesome. Yeah, it uh, looks like it may have some potential as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a few uh, little scenes in there that stand out, but... Uh, <laughs> Just seeing, you see the Star Destroyer, and you see this, the background mm-hmm. is slowly changing from, like, bright to dark, or vice versa, you I can't like remember which. shadow? <laughs> yeah, like a big shadow going across the screen, and they go and pan out, and 
here you, you've got the Death Star disc being installed onto the Death Star. It's like, holy crap! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. So we see some characters in there that uh not quite sure who they are yet. Um, you've got the... Um, the decorated Imperial looks like an Admiral. Uh, yeah, it looks like some type of Grand Admiral. Yep. Got the white uniform going on there. Mm-hmm. Not unlike uh, a certain Admiral from the books mm-hmm. that they threw away. Correct. Uh, <laughs> but I think if you also go back to the original uh, Star Wars movie... Yes, there, there was an scene. Admiral sitting there in yes, the there briefing room. Yep. Yes. Yep. So, uh, could this be that same character? Don't know. Uh, who knows? Um, rumors are that we are going to have uh, Tarkin in there, Grand Moff yep. Tarkin. Mm-hmm. And why not? He's kind of like the one in charge of the Death Star. So, <laughs> so you'd think you'd see him. Uh, yeah, we got um, to. Might yeah, have we. A certain lightsaber wielding uh, Dark Lord of the Sith type thing, you know? Yeah, rumors are we're gonna see Vader. Um, so who did you think was uh, kneeling before that? Um, I don't know what it was, but we had Emperor's royal guards on either side mm-hmm. of the screen. There, it's like Palpatine, maybe. Nah, that should have been a Darth Vader, but the uh, it looked more silhouette cl- wasn't good enough. Yeah, it looked more cloth than. You know, like plastic helmet. Yep. So, and if it is Palpatine, who the hell is he kneeling before? That could be even trickier then, couldn't it? Could they be maybe uh, bringing in Snoke? Hmm. Would that be interesting? And trying to tie it to the new series? Hmm. It's entirely <laughs> plausible. And, uh, you know, there's been talk of, you know, who exactly is a Snoke character. And, right. Yeah. And uh, nobody knows. Yeah. So, well, we'll get some clues coming on here. Well, I, yeah, hopefully they do it with Rogue One. They have some clues and not just create more, you know, questions that they can't answer. Yeah. Until later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, as long as we're talking about Star Wars again, well, we've got the fan film of the month. And yes, I did tease this last month. Actually, the first of this month. (laughs) I don't know if you ended up listening to the April 1st podcast, but for those of you who did, got Rick rolled. <laughs> <laughs> yes, every single link I put in went to Rick Astley's video. So, that's a funny <laughs> funny man. <laughs> yeah, too bad I couldn't do it like earlier in the day. The soonest I could do it was as soon as I got home from work. Hurry up, get this in there. <laughs> but uh which was really kind of funny though cuz okay, I had a link for what we have as the fan film of the month, Darth Maul Apprentice. So it, it's been out there a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's one to see anyways. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty decent. Slightly but, questionable, but pretty decent. Yeah. I, I thought the person playing Darth Maul was actually really good. Yes. He had the likeness down and the moves down and the evil smile. Yep. <laughs> the eyes, the smile, the just about anything there. And of course he steals the show, so why yes. Amongst other things. Yeah. But uh getting to that uh podcast I put out, yeah, you know, I teased that yeah. You know, I was thinking, what am I going to put for links on this fake podcast? And one of them I put was, new trailer for Rogue One. Not even realizing that 
less than a week later, there would actually be a trailer for Rogue One. So I'm like, whoa! I'm predicting the future. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you're, you're, you don't think about it. Uh, we talked about uh, Deadpool, and then it happened. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, that one had to happen. I mean, as soon as you saw that test footage, it was like, this needs to happen. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got the link out there for Darth Maul Apprentice, so go and check that out if you haven't already. And speaking of uh, fan films, of course we're not going to be in, in this uh, next round of fan film awards, but... <laughs> Yeah, the the people behind Rogue One are actually going to be hosting this thing. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah. So, good for them and bad for us. Yeah, because well, we like can't get a film in yet. More fun stuff in there, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so Yeah. But as far as the uh going all the way back to the trailers, Darth Maul Apprentice and Fan Film Awards, there's a, a little clip for that, too. We'll have all those links on the website for you, so Excellent. be sure and check those out. And now we're going to have another retro Kenner Star Wars commercial. Oh, my gosh. The Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot from the Star Wars action figures collection, each sold separately. I'm Jawa. Want to buy a droid? Sure, what you got? It's R5-D4 and the power droid. So. And here's Greedo, Han Solo, and Walrus Man. You've had it now, Solo. Yeah. Greedo, it's Ben Kenobi and his lightsaber. We're in trouble. Let's get out of here. Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot, R5-D4, Greedo, and other action figures sold separately from Kenner. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> See, to, to you I guys, it was... It as, I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> yeah, to you guys, it was like 30 seconds, maybe a minute. To us, it was like seconds. <laughs> it seemed like days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um... Gosh, what was it? It was almost uh, a month to the day, actually. I had my 25th annual sci-fi party. Ooh. And How was it, Todd? Was it fabulous? It was fabulous. Uh, we kind of broke down into two groups because we had enough people to do it. But we had some people upstairs playing uh, a few of the tabletop games. Um, things like uh, Star Wars Risk and a few others that weren't quite sci-fi approved, but... Hey, what can you do, I guess? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, considering we've actually renamed it to your sci-fi party. Yeah, initially it was the Star Trek party. And then Star Trek for a while became lame. <laughs> 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 and Star Wars came back into the, the fold, so you had to include them all, kind of. So That's the spirit. But yeah, downstairs we had, we had a land network going. We were playing the original... Star Wars Battlefront. Ooh. And it was awesome. Did you dominate? Uh, a little here and there. It, it was kind of it was kind of funny. The girls, they were uh they had a bowling tournament that day and so they kind of missed out on what happened in the beginning. And then uh yeah, they ended up getting home I'd say early evening and uh I'm like, you guys can play too. And I'm like, all right, Shelby played a little bit. Savannah's computer was still in her room, but I got her going. And, uh, oh my gosh, Savannah was dominating. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> so Good for her. Don't yeah. let her take, she can't take no crap from you guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good times there. Um. Yeah, and then not too long after that, this is also Star Wars related, but we had another member of the family join us. We now have, you can't hear him, he's asleep upstairs, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we've got a New Yorkshire Terrier whose name is Wicket. Isn't he like a snack for your other dog? 
Well, you would think so, but uh, they're actually getting along quite well. All right. Uh, the cat, however, <laughs> is like outnumbered now, and he's pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we we kind of keep a gate at the top of the stairs, so cat's got the downstairs, the dogs have the upstairs, and everyone seems happy that way. <laughs> Sounds like a good system. Yeah. So, uh, and I had to do this, but I went to Petco and looked at what Star Wars stuff they had. Of course, I got him a Star Wars collar. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yep. And I saw that they were on sale. I had to do it. I got Wicket. An Ewok costume. <laughs> there we go. That's yeah. the spirit. So they, there will be pictures posted at some point. <laughs> well, we'll see how well he uh, actually leaves it on. Yeah, it's funny. I put it on him, and he doesn't like the hood being on his head. So he's always shaking his head and getting it off that way. <laughs> but uh, while he did have it on his head, he was kind of walking around and his face is kind of so hairy that you put the hood on, the hair gets in front of his eyes, so he can't see that well. <laughs> so he's like running into walls and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, we'll we'll have to do something here. <laughs> yeah. But ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, you had posted a picture online recently, and it's your profile picture, isn't it? Uh, yes, I did update my profile picture. Yes. And I presume the TIE fighter pilot that's on there is you? <laughs> Why, correct. That That is me in my uh, TIE fighter pilot outfit, and I was recently admitted to the 501st Legion. Yay! Congratulations, Travis. Thank you, thank you. So It, uh, it was a long road, it was a windy path, but uh, we're there. And uh, I'm my next one I'm working on is an actual stormtrooper outfit, so I need to get that finished up and put together so I can do that one as well as an option. All right. So the the tie pilot is totally finished and totally finished. All it's right. Totally finished. Oh, well, I shouldn't say it's totally finished. Um, I gotta get the helmet, get the uh, padding in there done correctly, and put some fans in there. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it'd be a little warm, wouldn't it? It's a little toasty. Yeah. So are you still working on the Boba Fett costume? No, it's in a box. Ah. <laughs> no, the, what I have for that one, um, I'd have to redo <clears throat> probably about half the parts to get them mounted correctly and redone correctly. And uh, frankly, at this point, it'd be easier just to start over with some of that. So... Uh, I just put him on the back burner for now, and I'll worry about him in the future. All right. So, well, you know what this means. It means we have to write a movie that includes a TIE fighter pilot. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time we get it all put together, you could consider a stormtrooper as well, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, there we go. And we can we could have multiple stormtroopers because, you know, we just green screen you and... <laughs> <laughs> Overlay the footage, and there we go. We've got a whole troop. Man. Use the uh, the U.S. Army uh, Army of One theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we'll we'll see what we can come up with for another script. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you can come up with something, Todd. You're a very creative individual, and um, you know, have a lot of free time. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, you think I'm creative? <sighs> I, I've been doubting myself. <laughs> um, I'm I'm really surprised you haven't been using more of your life situations. I mean, you have multiple kids and your wife and pets. I mean, you should have adventures that you could translate into a movie every day. Every yeah, day well, not. <laughs> the kids, I don't know if they'd be too too into it. I know Rachel would never get in front of the camera. No, no, I'm just talking about your actual adventures with them. Should lead oh, you to those kind of stories. Yeah, as far as writing. Okay. Yeah, see. Yeah, like maybe. Like a, <laughs> you know, what do you do if Lord Vader shows up to take your child on a date? <laughs> <laughs> How do you handle this? There you go. 
Are you sure they didn't cover this in Chad Vader? <laughs> no, no, I need to go back and look at some of those and see once what they did. <laughs> yeah. I never did watch all the whole time. I should really do that. I know you had a lot of issues in the produce department. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can relate to that, can't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You'd be your hero. <laughs> uh, well, all right. I think we've covered uh, just about anything. Yes, we did. Wide range of topics. Yep. So, uh, unless you got something else. I think no, we, but I, I think we did good. I think we can call it a, a podcast. Another successful <laughs> podcast with Todd. There we go. Oh, I do want to mention, though. Oh. I am working on updating the website. <gasps> yes, uh, it's looked too bland for too long. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're adding in some color. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, I've already kind of done... I mean... Some of these you don't have a lot to work with. Right. Um, Because you're kind of going off of templates. And and some of that you can modify a little bit. So I'm seeing what I can do with the main site. But uh, the Flamecast site, um, I do have that switched over a different template. And I kind of like it the way it is right now. So we may just leave that. Um Gone will be the menu at the top of the no. main page. The menu's been there forever. I know, <laughs> but I mean, we have to take into consideration that a lot of people don't actually reach these places by desktop computer or laptop computer anymore. They're watching on their phones. And it doesn't work too well on the phone. <laughs> All right. Well, then you need to update it, Todd. Yeah. So that is in the deal right now. I was doing that right before you messaged me, right. before we started this uh, little adventure here today. So. Well, you see. got the rest of the night to get that fixed then. Yeah. I also <laughs> have to put a put a fence around the bottom of our fence in the backyard because Wicket is an escape artist. <laughs> so. Excellent. No, not excellent. <laughs> Very proud of you. Bad dog. <laughs> Bad Ewok. <laughs> so, we'll have to get that done yet, too. So. Oh, well, I bring it going. Chop, chop. Not much yeah. daylight left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, that's Flamecast for this month. So, this is Todd Platts. And this was Travis Buckmeyer. And that is a wrap. Yay!